Rapscallion Agency. A Leviathan Chronicles story. Chapter 4. L'amour et les lions. Love and lions. You've got to be kidding me, Cloricon. Two mornings had passed since Cloricon and Lisette had sloshed their way into Madame Dubois' boulangerie. That's going to be on your office? They had since dried themselves and were now finishing the extensive deliberation of their largest corporate expenditure to date. A delivery truck? I'm telling you, it's van life. It's the latest thing. Instead of shelling out for fancy office space that we don't need and can't afford, <laughs> we can use the van as a mobile base of operations. They couldn't sell bread out of that van. Mm, but we will sell justice. Well, when I look at the world today, I don't see justice paying the bills. Maybe not. But look at this garage space near Greenlee. If we take this space for six months and pay cash for the van, we should have enough to make it through the end of the year. Have you spent much time in Greenlee? I'm guessing it's not Versailles. It'll be fine. You know how to use a butterfly knife, right? What? Yes. I mean, no. I, not, like, well. <laughs> Relax, I'm just kidding. <sighs> I don't know, Clarican. You really think this is a good idea, the whole van thing? Yeah. Yeah. I really do. I, I think it's a smart move, and I think it'll save us a lot of money. And if we can get one or two more paying jobs under our belt, I think I can really kit this thing out with some sweet equipment. Paying jobs aren't going to be easy to find since our last job went SpongeBob on us. Oh, come on. You said you weren't going to bring that up. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. There's a clownfish wriggling in my ear. Does that mean you forgive me? It does. Does that mean you want to buy a van with me? Ooh, I guess it does. Hey, hey, that, <laughs> that's great. Seriously, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, and listen, I'm going to do all the work we need to equip this thing to be a full mobile workstation for surveillance, taking readings, on-site hacks. In fact, Raptor said he has some old connections that can help me get my hands on some used equipment. I'm afraid to ask the biggest question of all. What's that? What are you going to do with the big éclair on the roof of the van? Oh, I've got an idea for that. Trust me, you're going to love it. It was evening, well past midnight. The moon was full over Paris, but little of its pale light could break through the heavy wet clouds that hung over the city. There was no illumination in the highest floor of Vatek headquarters. The hallway, the offices, were all darkened, except for one. Dr. Venezois sat in her private chamber ensconced within the larger CEO suite, illuminated only by the small lamp at her desk and the freshly lit Gaulois cigarette she held in her right hand. She reached for the phone receiver that was connected via cable to a scrambling telecommunication module on her desk. General Kim? Dr. Venezua, are you quite certain this line is secure? We are on a hard line on an encrypted modem. You have my word that this conversation is held in complete privacy. Besides, if this conversation were to be known, it would be catastrophic for both of us as well as our shareholders. Agreed, Doctor. And for that reason, let us keep this conversation brief and to the terms we discussed. As you wish, General. Do you have the weapons ready? We've been successful in engineering the first mammalian prototype. Next week, we begin initiating wide-scale genetic cloning to assure against any rejection of the proprietary wet worship. And with a gestation period of 23 days, the initial shipment will be ready by the end of the month. <laughs> Can they really do what you say? More, General. Much more. <laughs> I have spoken to the Supreme Leader. He wishes to increase the count number of the initial supply. What exactly did you have in mind? A decision has been made to purchase the entire allotment. <laughs> All of it? Everything. All of it, Dr. Venezuela. I sense that your leader is trying to pay more for exclusivity. I have been authorized to increase our order. Perhaps to monopolize the product supply? We believe the increase is a necessary deterrent from the imperialist threats of the West. The People's Republic will procure 500 units. That would be our entire leader population of pups. 
Curious how the People's Republic would know the exact capacity of the embryonic incubators. The General Bureau knows a great deal about Vatek. More than enough to bring down both international sanctions and your precious stock price. With one data release, we could burn Vatek to the ground. Your threats bore me, General. You're the one changing the order. I offered you an allotment, not exclusivity. No one said you can have it all. What good is a weapon that everyone else can yield? Then, General, I'm sure you'll agree that an increase in the agreed-upon price is also necessary. <laughs> I certainly hope for your sake, Dr. Venezuela, that this is a joke. This is a counter-offer. How dare you threaten me! This is exactly the kind of betrayal we expected from a, a corrupt lying bureaucrat like you. Save your insults, General. The price for the 500 units would be $300 billion, payable in Bitcoin, to the Liechtenstein account we've used in the past. <laughs> you have gone completely mad. That is more than double the original price, and not commensurate with the increase that we... The research would... and development costs to create such a bio device were considerably higher than we first projected. Not to mention the legal risk that the company has exposed ourselves to during the early trials. The price reflects both our production cost and the current market value. <laughs> I hear the excuses of a lying dog. Are you quite finished, General Kim? <laughs> yes, Doctor, I am. But I warn you that when I inform the Supreme Leader... And let me remind you, and the Supreme Leader, that within 30 days, North Korea has a potential to contain the most powerful espionage weapon ever created by mankind. You will have an army of 500 controllable spies that can gnaw through bricks and lit pipes, can move undetected in buildings and secured facilities, can swim a mile, hold their breath for minutes, and become flawless photographers of sight, listeners of sound, and bioweapon delivery systems. Your country will possess the greatest army of spies and assassins the world has ever known. You should be thinking me that we're even having this discussion, General, not haggling over price. You are arrogant. But correct. Now stop wasting my time, General. We will never pay the price that you ask. <laughs> I'm not worried about that. 300 billion is the price, General. The only question is if you're going to be the one to pay it. Your discretion and early cooperation in our studies has made your regime eligible to be the first consumer of this critical geopolitical asset. But if the People's Republic think they are being taken advantage of, I could easily sell it for an even higher price to some of the richer countries that surround you. Israel, Germany, Saudi Arabia have already expressed interest. Or maybe I'll just sell the entire shipment to the United States through one of our subsidiaries. Your country has many enemies, General, and many rats. You are delusional if you really think you can intimidate me and... Think carefully, General. Think of what you have the potential to gain, and think of what you will lose if I hang up this phone. Your country could institute a structural advantage over every one of the intelligence agencies of your much larger enemies. You can tell your Supreme Leader to hold his breath every time he sees a small mouse in his palace. But you... You have 48 hours to deliver founds, General. Good night. Hold on. Uh, yeah, what? Raptor, it's Clerican. <laughs> Get in here, you freaking madman! How you doing, you crazy guy? <laughs> uh, I'm I'm doing okay, Raptor. Doing okay? Hey, Minska, sneezy. It's breezy. This guy says he's doing okay. Do you know what a badass this guy is? I listen, Raptor. A couple of years ago, he was running with me in a badass hack team called Sandsword. Used to be run by this guy Newt. Remember him? Yeah, yeah. I remember him, Raptor. We were like SEAL Team 6 for watering hole and Trojan attacks. And then, what happened? Some of the guys hit a DOD server or something, right? Must have found something huge, because the whole team gets busted in a SWAT raid. Clerican and the whole team gets thrown in the clink. That was a long time ago. 
Hey! But you know what? This little guy, Clurican, never ratted on his brothers. He never sold anybody else. Hey, man, I... I know we need to talk about some stuff. I... Damn right we do. I got a lot to say to you, bruh. You tried that perfume with your lady yet? Uh, no, no. Um, it, it hasn't left my pocket. Listen, I'm I'm really sorry that I didn't find your sweatshirt. I know oh, you were... Oh, yeah, the sweatshirt. Ah, oh, jeez. I, I totally forgot. Oh, my God. Uh, a few days ago, I called the club where I lost it. And it turns out that one of the girls had put it in my man purse. And guess what? High Rise bought his own sweatshirt from Supreme two days before me. What a mix up, right? Isn't that crazy? High Rise, that nutty kid. He thinks he's the next Kevin Mitnick, but dresses like Lil Nas X. Man, I tell you, these new celebrity hackers, I swear they just do the coding for insta hits. Not like you, Clerican. Old school, baby. What? Y you had it all along? You never lost the sweatshirt? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that funny? <laughs> no. No. That isn't funny. That's not funny at all. It's literally the opposite of funny. <laughs> okay. 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 But you know what's really funny? You flooded High Rise's house! <laughs> I hate that guy! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, you freaking flushed this house like it was a truck stop toilet! This numbnut really needed to get taken down a notch. Yeah, the now, the douchebag is living in a bidet! <laughs> Wait, what, what? You really had it all along? Yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad. But, but that was so amazing! You should have seen your face. What? What? What do you mean? How, how did you see my face? Uh, it's all here on the security footage from the street. I rise hacked Paris Metro and got this footage from traffic cameras. What? There's footage of us? Oh, yeah. It's all right here. Take a look. Come on, we have to go now. We never got no. that. I like the part where that one fish actually makes it out onto the sidewalk and into the sewer grate. That little guy was my hero. How did you get a hold of this? How did I? Dude, everyone has seen this. High Rise posted the footage on Entropica's boards, Anonymous, Lizard Squads, SCA, everywhere. I think it even got uploaded to Fail Army. Anyway, turns out the guy is super pissed, right? Flooded his house and stole some special box with a gun in it. I don't know, but he's asking anybody to find info on you. Says he wants to kill you, murder you, big reward, all that silly stuff. Hello, that doesn't sound very silly. Murder's not silly. Well, it's a good thing that White X scrubbed your identity from Interpol and FBI records. This guy is really dangerous, Clerican. Runs with some seriously bad dudes. You, oh man, you really gotta be more careful. What? Well, you sent me to his house to get your sweatshirt. You're the one that hired me to do the job in the first place. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Here, take this. What's this? Payment for the job. But. We never found your sweatshirt. Are you kidding? This was so much better. You're crazy, Clerican. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> You're crazy. Hey, girls, look at how crazy Clerican is. <laughs> nah, nah. Take the money, bro. I got you. Throw in a little extra in there just for the lows. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I gotta tell you, Clerican. I'm really glad you came to Paris. Ça va bien, merci. How are you doing? It's good to see you. You too, you too. Come in. Here, let me take your coat. Welcome to my apartment. Thank you. Uh, have you been? Uh, I've been okay. Here, come in the living room. I'm sorry, I just got home 10 minutes ago. My boss has been driving me crazy and I didn't get a chance to clean the place yet. Some hostess, right? Oh, stop. Your place is amazing. Tell me what's going on at work. Is your boss just piling you with glamorous assignments? Dubai again? Oh my god. No, I wish. Actually, she won't let me do my work. She's married to this hotshot wildlife photographer and she's totally convinced that he's cheating on her. So of course, she has me calling his secretary and ringing hotels non-stop to keep tabs on him. Ugh, it's awful. And it takes away all my time from digital branding, which is the only reason I'm at the stupid firm in the first place. Ugh, it's driving me crazy. Oh my god, Adele. Do you know what you should do? What? Tell me. You should offer me a drink. <laughs> <laughs> My god, I'm so sorry. I said that I'm a terrible hostess. Ugh, 
Is red wine okay? Yeah, yeah. And I haven't even put the chicken in the oven yet. I'm sorry. Don't be. No, but I wanted this to be a little nicer. I'm really sorry about having to ditch our lunch early the other day. It was rude of me, and I was really looking forward to catching up with you. Yeah, I know. I was too. Oh, Adele, what happened to your arm? Oh, uh, that's just a burn from the kitchen. Yeah, it looks more like a bruise than a burn. Oh, hey, is Côte du Rhône okay? Yeah, sure, of course. Adele. Well then. Here. Cheers. Come, let me show you around. Thank you. Wow, I really love your place. Well, really, it's Victor's. Who's Victor? My boyfriend. Remember I told you about... Oh, yeah, yeah. So where is Victor? Oh, he's in China right now. His firm called him away at the last minute. He works at a tech company, right? I told him all about you. Even some of our crazy adventures back in the orphanage. He said he's really dying to meet you. He wanted to be here tonight. You told him about the orphanage? Well, I mean, he knows about me. I mean, about my past. Why would you want anyone to know about your past? <sighs> Lisette, we're not defined by our history. When are you ever going to loosen up? Come on! And for the next two hours, the two friends did what all friends do. They shared a bottle. Do you want more wine? Which led to a second. Yes? To telling old stories, laughing heartily, and reconnecting. Adele proceeded to tell Lizette about the time she accidentally sent a sexy text to her boss instead of her boyfriend. No, you didn't! And Lizette confided in all the details of the exploding fish tank and the ultimate failure of their attempted sweatshirt heist. Oh, Adele, what am I going to do? The last job we took ended up with me being soaked and stepping on a squid. And my boyfriend is out buying a van that we may very well end up living in. Oh, seriously, what am I going to do? I don't know, Lisette. Isn't there someone that you could call for help? Oh, what about the man who adopted you? Monsieur Arlequin? No, no. There's no one that I'm going to call, especially not Okay. Him. It's okay, Lisette. I... I understand. It's just that the whole reason I came to Paris was to be independent. No more taking orders, no more favors. I just need to earn money on my own. Ugh, it's my boss Camille again. She's driving me crazy. Why? Ugh, she won't stop texting me about her husband Francois. She wants me to find out if he's cheating on her. Ugh. Oh, hey, I totally have an idea. You should trick my boss's husband into liking you. Ew. No, why? No, no, I saw it in a movie. It's called a uh, honey bear. Oh wait, um, honeysuckle. Uh, honey... I think you mean honey trap. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's where the woman hires a private detective to try to seduce her husband. You know, to see if he'd be faithful. <sighs> that's so stupid. No, you could do it. You're sort of like a detective now. Camille's husband already knows me, so I can't do it. But he doesn't know you. I could introduce you, and you could wear a wire or something like in the detective movies. Would you stop being stupid? It'll never work. Why? Because I don't look like you. He's never going to want me. Well, not if you wear that army jacket that I'm sure is glued to your skin by now. Hey, it's my favorite. No, seriously. Lisette. I'll give you a great makeover. I get so much free clothes from Envivage. Oh, I'm really sorry you get so many free clothes. Lisette, will you shut up? You could totally do this job. My boss is rich. She'll pay you. Oh, Adele. I'll make you look irresistible. I am very resistible. I think you're just afraid. I think I'm just tired. Just do it so I can go back to doing my job without being interrupted. His wife can stay in the van with your boyfriend and listen. You make a little flirty talk. Maybe he acts, maybe he doesn't, but it's a few hours of easy work and I know she has deep pockets. Come on, Adele. I don't want to be a piece of skin bait. Oh God, Lisette, you don't have to sleep with him. Just see if he wants to sleep with you. <sighs> I don't know. Come on, Lisette. You said you guys needed the money. The next day, just outside of Paris. God, I haven't been in this neighborhood for a while. Lots of broken windows. The air has gone a little bit rough. Definitely not the Champs-Elysees. I don't think any bicycles will be finishing the tour of Hey! Hey, attention! Dégagez là! C'est une piste cyclable! Hey, vous êtes sur le trottoir! Descendez, c'est réservé aux piétons! Vous étiquettez vos règles sont tellement bourgeoises! On vous reconnaît vite! Ah, connard! Oh, this must be it. Mm. Clarican? Are you in here? Hello? Yeah. Come on in. Over here. Where are you? Uh, look down. Ah, 
I didn't expect to see you on the floor under the van. In fact, I can barely see the floor with all the dirt. Yeah, I don't think Madame Dubois' son had a chance to clean up the garage before we got here. Wow, you look like a grease monkey. How's it going? Uh, uh, pretty good, pretty good. I spent the last two days working on her. Got new tires put on, and I'm about halfway through upgrading the electrical system. You know, I think there's a lot of potential here. Potential for what? For what we can do to the van. I've installed some telecom gear I stole from White Egg, and some spare parts Raptor had left over from building Big Mac. Great. We get Raptor's leftovers. Ow! I just stepped on a screwdriver. Yeah. The garage is great, right? I found a huge box of tools over by the radiator. Well, you should put some of them away. Here. I'll help you up. <coughs> Clarokin, what's this vial that fell out of your pocket? Oh, uh, don't, uh, don't, don't open that. Here, uh, give it to me. Is that drugs? No, uh, way worse. Uh, something Raptor gave me. Uh, I'll explain later. Ah, Clarokin, I saw a rat. <laughs> I bet it wasn't a rat. Oh, yeah, then what was it? A uh, cockroach driving a dune buggy? Oh, Clarokin. Yeah? This place is a dump. Oh, dump is a strong word. I, I know it looks a little chaotic now. I, I'd settle for unorganized mess. <sighs> so, how's the van? Does it even run? What are you talking about? It runs great. Madame Dubois wouldn't sell us a lemon. Then why does it look like you're trying to take the van apart? Oh, uh, it looks worse than it is. I actually just installed a docking port for Excalibur so we can make the van a mobile workstation. And... I'm gonna put in a mini-fridge for those long stakeouts. We don't have time to eat steaks. No, it's not, uh, uh, never mind. Do we have enough power for that? Eh, uh, we should. The battery charges off the alternator. That must be a big battery. And heavy. Wanna help me put it in? Oh, did I arrive just in time for the heavy lifting? Yeah, you most certainly did. Well, you know how to make a girl feel special. Hmm, <laughs> here, grab that end. Got it. Okay, we're just gonna put it inside the rear doors. One. <clears throat> Two, three. Uh, Clarican, this is... Uh, yeah, it's pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, there. Whew, good job. Perfect. And right, let me just tighten the clamps. Uh, and when are you taking down that stupid chocolate eclair on the roof of the van? Oh, uh, I've got a plan for that. Well, good, because it looks ridiculous and we won't fit into any car park. That's it. Oui? Are you sure about this honey trap job? I mean... I know Adele is your friend, but can't we find some other jobs that don't involve trying to get men to sleep with you? Are you jealous? You realize our last job was a marine life apocalypse. Yeah, I'm not ready to talk about Puffy yet. I just think it's a little hypocritical to turn your nose up at a job that I found when the last job you found involved both a wardrobe and firearm malfunction. Okay, okay, fair point. I just... Just what? I just thought we're trying to be security consultants, not marriage consultants. What's that supposed to mean? It... it doesn't make me feel good when I think about you being dangled as bait at a bar. I don't know, I just think you're beautiful, and any guy that tries to... You think I'm beautiful? Of course I do. The most beautiful girl in Paris. And it worries me some guy, some French guy, might try to put his hands all over you. Clarican? What? Don't you think I can take care of myself? Of course I do, but... Look, maybe I am jealous, and I'll have nothing to do but sit in the van The while only you... one who should be feeling jealous is Madame Bonny, Adele's boss. That's the job. I'll meet her husband at the bar, dazzle him with my sparkling personality, and then we go home and get paid. Easy. If you say so. Here, do me a favor. Put this on. What is it? It's a body mic. It'll let me listen to all the uh, sweet nothings you're gonna blow in her husband's ear. I'll run the wires down so no one can see it. <laughs> it tickles. No, don't tell the husband that. Okay, walk over there. <laughs> Hold on, let me clean up the audio a little bit. Okay, now try it. Bonsoir, monsieur. My boyfriend left me for a bakery van, and now I'm all alone. Just me and a small bonsai tree. That's it. My arteries are clogging from all that cheese. I'm taking your microphone away. You have to get me first. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll catch it. I've caught you before. Oh. <laughs> Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Oh, no, 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 no. You're not allowed to say that. If I'm not allowed to say that, then you're not allowed to say that. <laughs> 
Hello, handsome. I know your wife isn't here, but can you give me a map? Because I'm lost in your eyes. Oh, okay, y you need to stop. That, that, that's just cheesy. Hey, 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 come back. Too slow. <laughs> Monsieur, take me to bed. Your eyes are like the ocean. I could swim in them all day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just too irresistible, Clerican. Wait until I get my hands on your flirty ass. <laughs> too fast. Now fast enough. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, you did get me. I'm gonna get this mic off you. You don't mind if I uh, reach inside to take off the... Uh... No, I don't mind at all. Mm. Um, Clerican, can I tell you something? What's that? You have an oil stain on your nose. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, you know what? Come here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that makes two of us. Forty-eight hours later, the stately Georges V Hotel loomed over the wide cobblestones of its eponymous avenue. The limestone building was opulently illuminated for the evening, inviting both wealthy tourists and Parisians inside. Nearby, Adèle and Lisette walked down Rue Pierre Charon towards the hotel. Adèle looked like a walking Instagram post in her stylishly embroidered jeans and thick jewelry, Ugh. while Lisette struggled painfully to keep up, Ugh. in unfamiliar shoes and a plunging, dark navy wrap dress that clung tightly to her hips. Ugh. My feet are killing me. They're called stilettos, not catchers. And, and stop licking your lips. The lipstick tastes weird. And don't touch your face so much. We spent an hour on your makeup. You spent an hour. You look amazing, Lisette. I almost don't recognize you. Oh, thank you. That remains a lot. Oh, over there. I think I see my boss Camille. The fetching pair crossed the wide boulevard and walked towards a parked white bakery truck. Uh, why is there a donut on your surveillance van? Featuring a large, conspicuous chocolate eclair perched upon its roof. Oh my god. He left a stupid eclair on the roof. Hey! Chloricant stood beside the back door of so? the van next to an older, well-dressed woman whose black hair was pulled back. Check out the new van! In a neat, tight bun. Adele! What the hell have you talked me into? Who the hell are these two? I'm old enough to be this boy's mother. I hired you to seduce my husband, not deliver me a croissant. Camille, this is Lisette Mansable, and I see you've already met her partner, Clarican. Enchanté, madame. Uh, well, Lisette, is that really what you're gonna wear? I can see Paris, and I can see France. Uh, what my partner is trying to say is that we should get mic'd up so you can hear the conversation inside the hotel with your husband. I promise we are professionals. Yeah, I, I don't know where we're, uh, we're going to put that mic. I, I don't think there's enough dress fabric. Just stop. You know, I'm actually being serious. I've seen handkerchiefs with more fabric. The guy is going to be all over you. In case you forgot, that's the whole point. Well, I'm sorry if I didn't come to Paris to watch my girlfriend be boob bait in Euro trash waters. Well, maybe next time don't go all Miami Vice on a fish tank and we wouldn't have to take this kind of stupid jobs. Oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. This is crazy. But I need to know. I need to know if he would be unfaithful to me. That's not crazy, right? Oh, so I'm not being... Camille, Camille, <laughs> relax. If this is what you need in order to trust Francois, then this is just an investment in your relationship. And my friend Lisette and Clarican are excellent at this kind of work. Yeah, I love my job. That scoundrel was in Bali last month and when he came home, his entire suitcase smelled of cheap perfume. Madame it Madame. had a hoary smell. I promise you that we will get to the bottom of this so that you can have some peace. Yes, that's all I want. I understand. But I think now it's best if you go into the back of the van with my partner, Clarican, who will have me on an audio feed, so that you both will be able to listen and hear us inside. And in the meantime, Adèle and I will meet Francois at the hotel. And so, Adèle and Lisette crossed the boulevard and walked towards the elegant Georges V Hotel. As they walked, their presence did not go unnoticed by those whom they passed. The pair entered the lobby, and their eyes quickly fell on one François Fateau, a ruggishly handsome wildlife photographer, world traveler, and most importantly, okay. husband of Camille Bonnet. Let's sparkle. 
François, bonsoir. Oh my God, how are you? Target acquired. Adèle, bonsoir. My God, how are you? So good to see you. Oh, thank you. Good to see you too. Oh, you look très chic. <laughs> But you always look très chic, Adèle. <laughs> you always know how to flatter me, François. I'd like to introduce you to my friend that I told you about. François Photo, meet my friend. Um... Quick, listen. Think of a fake name and save her. When trying to gain someone's confidence, always seem humble, approachable, and most importantly, believable. Frenchy. My name is uh, Frenchy Boulevard. Enchanté. What? What? I'm sorry, mademoiselle. What was that? Seriously, let's say Frenchy Boulevard. Uh, my name is uh, Frenchy Boulevard. I've heard stripper names with more imagination. Ah, well, uh, pleased to meet you, Mademoiselle Boulevard. Yes, Frenchy is a photography student at the Paris College of Art, and I know she's a huge fan of your work. Uh, yeah, that's right. I really love your work, Monsieur Fatou. Uh, I've been very inspired by it in my studies. Oh, please, please, call me Francois. So tell me, Frenchie, which of my works have I inspired you? Was it my recent photo essay with the endangered species in the Brazilian rainforest? Or was it the more politically driven work in my early career on the Gobi Desert? Yes, yes, you know, yeah, the, the, the one with the animals. <laughs> but my dear, as a wildlife photographer, almost all of my photos have animals in them. Yeah, maybe it was the one with the lions that were eating each other or something. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to take this. Excusez-moi, François. Oui? Adèle, what's going on in there? Your friend is as seductive as a dead frog. Oh, no, that's terrible. Yes, I'll come right over. Oh, la la, I'm so sorry, but um, I have to leave. Leave? What? No. You just got here, you have to stay. No, no, I really, I really have to go. I'm so sorry, François, and uh, Liz, uh, uh, Frenchy, <laughs> there was a, there is a problem at the atelier with the models. Um, <laughs> apparently, someone fed them, so um, I have to leave right away. But you two stay here. But no. Tell him that you'd love to stay and chat. Oh, that's too bad, Adele. Uh, but Francois, I'd love to stay and spat. I mean, chat with you. Uh, and I'm really a huge fan of your work, and I'd love it if you could tell me a little bit more about the tigers. The lions. Yes, of course, lions. Ah, uh, well, Adele, so sorry you can't stay. Au revoir, good luck getting a taxi. Uh, it's starting to rain outside. Yeah, like I said, good luck. Uh, go, go, go. Ah, uh, it's such a shame. I tell my wife all the time that Adele works too hard. Oh, you have a wife? Yes, yes, I, I, I do, but my, my work often takes me very far away from her. I guess you could say... Uh, <sighs> We have a very independent lives. It must be very lonely to travel as you do. Well, I must admit I am not always alone. <laughs> I knew it! I knew that oh, cinema was it. sitting on me! I just knew it! Are you recording this? I, 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 easy on the van. I still owe Raptor two Bitcoin for some of this equipment. Yes, of course, we're recording. I can't I, believe I was just uh, such a uh, fool! Uh, he would come home from his trips with lover's bites all over his neck. He kept telling me, no, no, it was the Congolese I, I, centipede. So, the bite of the Congolese centipede is quite venomous. Other creatures. I was bitten on the neck twice, right here. They caused these horrible red circles and terrible hallucinations. <gasps> I can't imagine. Lesser men have expired. Well... You must be very brave to endure Frenchie, it. Uh, may I call you Frenchie? Uh, Frenchie, you must understand that the life of a wildlife photographer is never easy. Because of the wildlife? <laughs> well, yes, but, but the travel is very demanding, especially on one's personal life. You must miss your wife very much. Yes, but she has her work. You know, it, it takes a lot of time to run a fashion business. That must not leave much time for her to attend to you the way a wife should. You mentioned that in your travels you were never alone. No, 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 no. The, the animals are my constant companions. Oh boy, I don't like where this is headed. Yes, yes, but François, surely 
You would entertain a companion during those long trips, lonely nights in the bush. The bush. I don't find being around the bush to be a lonely experience. Still getting worse. Was there not some young student that accompanied you? Someone you could take under your wing? Lisette extended her slender arm a few inches closer to Francois, not quite touching, but inviting him to come closer. Oh, but Frenchy, what are you really asking me? Francois moved his hand slightly closer. I just would like to know exactly what subjects you would entertain in future work. Do you mean in my photos? I mean, what animals attract you, Francois? Well, it is often a juvenile that attracts my lens first. This wild kingdom dirty talk is just getting gross. Shut up! You're going to ruin everything! What do you mean, Frenchy? <laughs> Don't be silly. You're, you're not going to ruin anything with me. Uh... I'm not. No, I think I understand what is going on here. Oh, you do? Oui, je comprends what it's like to be a young photography student. And it must be intimidating to be with someone, well, of, of my reputation. You do have quite a reputation. You want an internship. What? It's okay, we can discuss it. May I buy you another drink, French? If you keep... Calling me Frenchy, I think I'm going to need one. Deux whisky, s'il vous plaît. Oui, monsieur. So, tell me about you. I want to learn more about you, Frenchy. Tell me about the work you're doing in school. Oh, it's not very good. <laughs> I doubt that, Frenchy. What's wrong with your work? It's... it's blurry. Well, uh, focus is not the sole attribute of photography. You know, I, I couldn't make myself available if you would like to open your portfolio to me sometime. Just invite him to a Motel 6 on the Serengeti and let's close the case. Maybe I'd like you to look at my aperture. What? 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 Uh, I mean, in my photos. I mean, my camera. I don't, I mean, I can't, I can't seem to capture the magic of nature the way that you can. You see the soul of the animals in all the images you capture? Why don't you ask him to blow in your lens and see where that gets you? Will you shut up? Uh, please, Frenchy, do not berate yourself. Really, it's not a problem. I'd be happy to come over to look at some of your photos. You know, I was a student once too. In fact, I've helped many students, young ones like you, find their photographic voice. What? Did you hear what he said? I knew it. All those young students. That dog has laid his head on more pillows than a homeless pet bag. Oh, I can't stand it. He lied to me. He lied to me. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, Madame Bonnet, I, I warned you about the truck. This isn't some Greek dinner party where we break everything when we're done with it. Now, just, just c come on. You're, 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 you're a beautiful woman. Who... Oh, this is terrible. You're too young. You couldn't understand. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. Oh, shoot. Joe, did something break? No, uh, no, no. no. Uh, What's that strange smell? Oh my god, oh god, that stupid pheromone thing Raptor gave me. It's like my nose feels tingly on the inside. Is it warm back in the van? Uh, oh, because it definitely feels warm. I'm going to take off my jacket. That's okay. It's probably not okay. Oh, you uh, know, you have the most beautiful skin, Monsieur Clorica. I, you, you, you could just Do call you me mind? Paul. If I sit a bit closer. Well, you know, it's, it's already a bit snug back here. Is it okay if I just put my hand here? No, it's definitely not okay with my girlfriend. You know, Frenchie, so much of photography is creating an intimacy with your subject. Oh, um, I, I can't understand that. Francois took Lisette's response as an invitation and allowed his hand to inch forward along the bar, taking her slender hand into his. Uh, Lisette, we might have a problem. You know, I find you very beautiful, Frenchie. But Francois, what would your wife say? I want to be like a banana, Clarican. That's, that's, that's the problem. My wife, well, <laughs> you see, Frenchie, it, it's very complicated. Uh, Madame Bonnet, can you please stop me? I've got my shirt. May I please just smell your chest? Hey, what's going on over there? Oh, Frenchie, I, I must apologize. I, I did not mean to offend you by holding your hand. I was just, I just... Just being affectionate, you know. What? No, no, n not you. Please, 
Let me just see what your ear tests like. It's been too long. Oh, Mademoiselle, please. Hey, this isn't supposed to be a teenage group fest. What's going on? Mademoiselle, I have already apologized. I admit I felt an initial attraction, but I am sorry if I misread. No, Francois. Oh, I've never been attracted to younger men, but I want to drink you like a Beaujolais in spring. Ah, oh, Madame Bonnet, the band gets really cold. I think you might want to leave your boss on. Clarica, what is going on over there? What? Who are you talking to, Frenchie? Is that a radio in your ear? Uh, n no, no, actually, um, these are the new AirPods. I was just listening to some very inappropriate music. Frenchie, you are lying to me. Tell me what this is all about. <sighs> Monsieur Fato, I have to apologize, but, uh, but your wife hired me to try to tempt you to have an affair in order to test your fidelity. You must be joking. I'm afraid not. I was supposed to be the bait to seduce you. But now, I think she's trying to seduce my boyfriend. What? Camille? Now? I'm afraid so. Where? Oh, just outside the hotel. Angrily, François Fateau grabbed Lisette by the arm. Tell me where she is. <sighs> Across the street. Come on. Mm, I could teach you so many things. Would you please give me back my belt? It's my belt, not your belt. Over there. Bring that. Take me, Clarica. Well, the van's in park. I can't take you anywhere. I... Just what the hell are you doing, Clarica? What the hell are you doing, Camille? What the hell are you doing, Lisette? I brought Francois back to the van to show him how much his wife cares about him. But now we find this? Oh, trust me, this is a lot worse than it looks. Why are you sitting on top of that young man in the back of a bakery truck? Why is she wearing your belt as a collar? Lisette, Monsieur Fateau, this, this is really my fault. You, you see, we, we had a, a, an exposure in the van. Oh, what exactly did you expose? I think I'd like to know that, too. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I had these concentrated pheromones in my pocket, and the container broke. And, and, and I guess it was really potent because, look, with the door open, it should air out in a second. <laughs> oh, François, I'm so sorry. This was all my fault. I hired these young people to seduce you. I was so afraid that you would cheat on me. I couldn't think straight anymore. I paid her to seduce you to see what you would do. I know that's not fair. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Are you crazy? You had me followed? Are you insane? Why would you do such a thing? Because I love you, Francois. Oh, come here, you fool. You don't need to test me. I love you. I've loved you for so many years, my pet. There's never been someone else. I am so <sighs> touched that you would pay someone to sleep with me. Hey, I wasn't paid to sleep with you. You sure acted like it. And by the way, you never dressed like that for me. Oh, that's really cute, coming from someone who still has saliva in their ear. Camille, let me take you home. You start the fire and I'll bake you my tartas oignons. And we'll talk all night. I want to hear everything about your job, your life, you, my love. François, François, my sweet, I'm sorry. No, I am sorry. I won't neglect you again. I'll have Adele call us a car. Uh, you sure you want to let your new girlfriend go so quickly, Carrigan? That was the result of a chemical reaction, Lisette, and you know it. Oh, I see. So maybe we need to get the van fumigated so random women don't jump in and start asking for your éclair. I love you, Camille. I love you too, Francois. You know, you're really impossible. I do everything I can to support us in this venture. And I'm the one getting punched in the arm by Chester LaRue while you get to sip 30 euro cocktails while some guy gets to let his eyes walk all over you. Don't walk away from me! Hey! You know I can't walk in these stupid heels! Clarican! At least you didn't have to wear a skin-tight dress! No, you got to just sit in a van and eat macaron while you fight off sexual advances. Oh, I feel so sorry for you. And this whole thing was your idea anyway. Instead of setting up corporate firewalls, you're shooting fireballs with rich playboys. That... You're just feeling guilty about the aquatic genocide you committed a few nights ago, and now you want to blame me for a job that goes bad because you think you're the French president? And by the way... Ah, young love. You 
have been listening to The Rapscallion Agency, a Leviathan audio production written and created by Christophe Laputka. Go to rapscallionagency.com or to dive deeper into the story, listen to The Leviathan Chronicles on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. The Rapscallion Agency was executive produced by Amish Chani, produced and mixed by Robin Shore, produced by Claire Dodin and Kim Donovan, casting by Claire Dodin and Kim Donovan, original music by Luke Allen, editing and sound design by Luke Allen and Robin Shore, directed by Christophe Lepotka. Starring Claire Dodin as Lisette Menzabil, Todd Habercorn as Chlorican, Caroline Givarch as Dr. Turn Venezois, Monia Ayashi as Adèle Lesange, June Yoon as Raptor, Bernadette Colomine as Camille Bonnet, Todd Butera as François Photo, William T. N. Hall as Harlequin, narrated by Benoît Monin. Additional voices by Bruno Stéphane, June Yoon, and Kim Donovan. For a full cast list, go to rapscallionagency.com. To learn more about our other audio drama podcasts, go to leviathanaudioproductions.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get the latest news and behind-the-scene footage. Thank you for supporting Leviathan Audio Productions, and thank you for listening to The Rapscallion Agency. Production.